Hello and welcome! This video is for RoboNerd 2020. Now last year in RoboNerd 2019, I got to for the first time get to see what a heavyweight robot looked like in person. Honestly, RoboNerd was amazing. It's honestly breathtaking to get to see all of these amazing robots up close and personal. It really gives you a perspective of the scale of these machines. And getting to see some of the best robots, new and old, was amazing. I got to see the likes of Apollo. I got to see Carbide. I got to take a picture with John Reed. Honestly, I, I got to see Tornado. I got to see King B. I got to see Eric. Like, it legitimately was such an amazing time. And I can't wait for RoboNerd 2021. Now, sadly, due to recent goings on, we can't all meet together for RoboNerd 2020, but I love that everyone is coming together for this little online event so that RoboNerd can continue on in spirit. So I came to Simon Harrison with my idea of going over 10 robots that, if remade in today's day and age, could still do pretty well. Simon liked the idea, but he gave me one addition to the challenge. It has to have been a robot that went to RoboNerd. Now, thankfully, I was more than up for this challenge, and when it came to old robots, I also gave myself an extra little bit. It has to have been at least 15 years old. Now, why 15? Well, because Series 7 of Robot Wars finished airing 16 years ago, according to the Robot Wars wiki. So... That gave me a rough idea on that, and so it means that as easy as it would be to say, oh, Carbide, that would do great, you know, just because it stopped fighting now. It's way too new. We obviously know it would do well. I want to talk about the classics, the robots that have either been competing for an absurdly long time or a robot that we haven't seen in years that could still potentially do well if remade nowadays. Not saying winning any tournaments... But if you saw this robot go up against one of your own, you might be a little bit nervous and, you know, you know, you try and be very careful going up against them. But without further ado, let's get into the first one. And the first robot is Bigger Brother. Now, Bigger Brother is one I'm sure we're all familiar with, be it you watched it in Robot Wars doing very well for itself, or you watched it getting a paint job and becoming Little Sister in BattleBots. We're all familiar with this really quite successful flipper, a robot that didn't necessarily have the most powerful flipper on the block, but there was two things about it that proved its capabilities, the driving skill and the durability of the machine. And I have to say that those two things are possibly more important than ever before. Nowadays in robot combat, a split-second decision could mean life or death for your robot, so having a good driver behind the controls is absolutely important to be able to get you far. And durability is also needed due to how powerful some of the robots have gotten nowadays. You look at the likes of Tombstone, Deep Six, or Carbide, and see some of the big powerful spinners out there. You look at someone like Spectre slash Quantum, you see how powerful Crushers have gotten. You see Shatter just denting its opponents with its powerful hammer. And you know, a robot has to be tanky to be able to deal with that. Now, I am a little concerned when it comes to that flipping arm, but if that was dealt with, then I think Bigger Brother could do well. It managed to do quite well for itself in the past against the likes of Hypnodisc, and I think it could do well if remade today. I know that they tried to do something quite similar with the likes of RT, which got into Series 8. Unfortunately, it seemed to have a bit of a bad run, some bad luck happened to it. I really hope that it's not the last we're going to see of that type of design. I know Orti team maybe had a bad run, but I think it could actually be quite a good design if given some more TLC. I know they're working on the Four Horsemen, and honestly, those are some really good robots as well. But I can't help but just hope and pray that one day we get to see the return of that style of flipper. Just a wonderful robot. Quick little side note, 
Bigger Brother actually has had a fight or two in recent times, but both fights of those have been against Apollo and Behemoth. Honestly, I do kind of recommend you check them out. Um, while Bigger Brother doesn't get to do a whole lot, it's just kind of amazing to see that the design is still, you know, getting into little fights here and there. Second up is 259. Now, I'm cheating a little bit because I'm trying to typically go with whole robots and all we got of 259 was the disc. But I feel like 259, it's really crystal clear why this would do well. Vertical spinners have been rising up the ranks in recent years. They've proven time and time and time again to be incredibly devastating, especially when you see the likes of Deep Six and Drizzle, which are pretty much a similar design to what 259 and Nightmare were doing in the past, just brought to their most extreme degree. And if 259 were to go down that route, while I don't know how well it, how far it would go, 259 would absolutely be feared because it would just have so much power in that vertical spinning disc that it could potentially destroy a robot in one hit. Now, saying that, there is also 259 Horizontal, and we've seen what a horizontal spinning disc can do nowadays as well with the likes of Supernova. Honestly, 259 is a robot that, if remade nowadays, could be a genuinely devastating force. It's hard to say if it would go very far, given how good a lot of spinners have gotten nowadays. It's a very competitive field. But I've got to say, I definitely feel like 259 would still be a feared robot in the arena. Then we have Onslaught. Now hold on, I know Onslaught was never the most impressive looking robot of all time, but honestly, I think there's something there. One of the first robots that ever really showed us just how small a heavyweight could get. Like, I saw it in real life, and I couldn't fathom that that robot was the same weight as some of the robots that I looked at that day. It's just tiny in comparison. Now, that could be something, if done today, could absolutely be used to its advantage. A densely packed, well-armoured lifter? Honestly, that could do really well. And we've seen the likes of lifters like Sewer Snake and Duck. While they may not always reach the top, they often prove themselves to be quite a force to deal with. Now, obviously, Onslaught would have to get rid of the car steering, but I'm just saying, like, it's something that I think could do surprisingly well. A lifting scoop, you got the Shream Egg, like, it could be a very surprising machine if it was redone. Not holding out hope for it, but I'm just saying, that's one of my wildcard votes for you. And then we have Vector of Armageddon, easily the oldest robot on this list. Vector of Armageddon, if you don't remember, was in Series 1 of Robot Wars, in the Featherweight Heat. Honestly, I think it's fairly obvious why I went for Vector of Armageddon. It's very much got some of the same principles to it that the likes of La Machine and Roadblock had. It's a nice, big, well-driven wedge, or scoop, or whatever you want to call that shape. Point is, it's tough if remade today. It could essentially be a two-wheel drive brick of a machine. You take a remade Vector of Armor again with modern day armor, put it up against a featherweight spinner, it's going to take some big shots. Now, the only real thing is, obviously, it needs to be able to either be invertible or preferably have a Shremek to be able to, de you know, to get back on its feet and utilize its wedging abilities. But I'm just saying, like, to me, it's an obvious case that Vector of Armageddon could still be a pretty damn good featherweight if remade nowadays. And then you move on to Dan Tomkia. Now, Dan Tomkia is another one that I think is really, really easy to argue the case for, because even in Series 8, it was actually surprisingly good. Now, I think one of the big problems for Dan Tomkia is its unconventional shape makes it a little bit more difficult for it to deal with some of the big, powerful flippers of today. But I think if you were to... But I do have an idea on maybe how it could be dealt with. Maybe if it, instead of going straight for regular old, you know, British wedge flipper, 
if they had like an extension to the flipping arm, similar to the likes of Bronco having a little spatula at the front, it would give it potentially the reach it needs to get under the opponents before the opponents can wedge the more interesting parts of the robot. And as we've seen, Dan Tomkia has more than enough flipping power to be able to make use of that. It would be an interesting take on the American style flipper and honestly, I think it could do fairly well. It's hard to say because there's not really many examples of modern day American style launchers in the, in the modern combat scene, but I'm just saying that I think Dan Tomkia could do that style very well. Then you have King B, and no, I'm not just saying this because Simon hosts RoboNerd. This is not biased, stop patting me. Listen, I love a good lifter. I love a good lifter, and I think King B is a wonderful lifter. It's a robot that, despite any hiccups it's faced in its run, continues to grow and improve. It's honestly great to see it keep coming back for more. And I can definitely see some great potential there. Now, I think the spikes maybe do hamper it a little bit. You know, so maybe I'd replace those with some forks. I'm just saying, I know, Armchair Builder, I'm doing it again like I did with Dan Tomkia. I know. Honestly, though, no matter what I say, King Bee is still being worked on, as far as I'm aware. I saw it. I saw videos of it at recent events. And... I'm genuinely happy to see it just continuing to get strong. Like, if Behemoth, after all these years, is still a relatively competitive machine, if Terahertz is still a robot that still gets people worried, I gotta say, I absolutely feel like there is hope for King B. So, I, I'm always rooting for that robot. Then you have Eric. Why are you boring me? I'm right. Look. I know everyone gets on this robot because it's a bit of a meme, it's a bit of a played out meme of a robot at this point, but hear me out, I actually like this robot outside of the meme. I honestly think it's a robot with a fair bit of charm to it, and I think the design, if it were remade nowadays with that flipper in mind, could actually be quite good. The face is actually perfectly slanted to make it quite durable if it took on a big horizontal spinner so you know a narrow flipper is no reason to doubt eric's capabilities i know this is a bit of a stretch but we've seen what the likes of hydra can do hydra has a very skinny flipper and yet it is supremely powerful if a modern eric was even 25 percent as powerful it still would be a relatively big threat in the arena I'm just saying it, uh, Eric is a robot I think does have potential. Now, I don't know what Anthony Murney's plans are for Eric so much. I don't, I'm assuming it's more just a simple recovery job, but I am absolutely thrilled to see what he does with it. Because even if it's just a recovery job, it'll be good to get to see that robot recovered and back in working order. So Anthony, good luck with that, and I hope you keep us all updated. Then we have 13 Black, and 13 Black is very simple to me, me why I think that is, and I'm sure some of you are uncertain. 13 Black, if flipped over, isn't a fair bit of trouble. You know, it's got two spinning weapons, that's never going to be as effective as one spinning weapon. How could 13 Black do well if remade today? And I've just got to say, you need to take notes from Rotator from BattleBots. Rotator has proven that having two spinning weapons is no reason to underestimate a machine's capabilities. Rotator has had the durability to be able to take on hits from the likes of Tombstone and keep on going, and the spinning discs and bars are actually very capable of dishing out damage. If 13 Black even closely resembles something like Rotator, I think it would be a devastating force in the UK scene. And then there's Big Nipper. What a robot. Now this one goes without saying as it actually won a Robot Wars live event before and is considered a champion. I think for a lot of people it goes without saying that Big Nipper would do well in the modern scene because it has done well in the modern scene. 
Um, but I feel like I should still explain regardless. Now, Big Nipper with its giant grabbing weapon is already a very good force against opponents, getting a strong hold of its opponents and never really letting go. But the real, the real main event is the vertical spinning disc we saw at Robot Wars. Now, we've seen the power that thing possesses. We saw it chuck one half of Crackers and Smash up into the ceiling and out of the arena. It even beat Aftershock. Aftershock, people. Aftershock is like one of the most feared robots right now in the UK live scene. If Big Nipper is able to take Aftershock on, I think that's enough said, really. And number one... To me, this is a robot that not only could do well in the modern scene, but it could win a modern day award in my eyes. And that is Tornado. Now this one, this one goes a step beyond because I don't care what tournament you put in front of me, I can almost be certain Tornado would be a force and potentially win the whole thing. You go to something like Robo Games where you can have an inactive weapon, you give Tornado some fronts similar to Original Sin, you know, you get yourself a hinged Wedgelets or the anti-spinner plow, and you watch as Tornado does what Tornado does best, it shoves its opponents around. But let's say you go to something like Robot Wars or Battlebots where you need an active weapon. Well, you give it some things like like a spinner attachment, some something like, you know, what Bite Force has, or just anything really. Like there's so many, uh, nowadays especially with how far these Swiss army bots have gotten with the likes of Bombshell, honestly, there are so many directions you could take with Tornado, and all of them have the potential to be something special. I think Tornado would be a absolute force if it were remade today. It would be a brick, It and it could still have relatively powerful weaponry, especially now that not only would it get weight saved by modern day electronics, you know, motors and batteries and whatnot, it would have the additional weight from the modern day rule set to pack into even more powerful weaponry or drive or something. For me, it's obvious why I put Tornado in the number one spot. I hope you're all enjoying RoboNerd. I hope we can all meet together for RoboNerd 2021. It's so great to just be able to see that this community, even when things seem dire, can all come together to share our love for this sport. Whether, you, whether you're watching on from the sidelines, whether you made a robot that died within the first battle, or you made a robot that made it far, I love the fact that we can all come together and just enjoy this niche little hobby together. Anyway, won't waste any more of your time. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you all later. Goodbye.